welcome everyone and back to our live session today and thank you for joining as you all know today's topic will be on like burnt out and so before we actually go in to talk about what is burnout and whatnot so for today's live session it will be shared by one of the clinic counselors here and also by Yong Sin, our clinical psychologist hi everyone welcome back Thank you for taking this time and join our live talk to explore and reflect on burnout and understanding <laughs> burnout as well. So, in, I just want to ask everyone, you know, have you ever thought that like, you can like, go um, to more tasks, like so much to do? If any of this can be an indication that like you're experiencing burnout, but even if you don't share like similar thoughts, don't worry, you can still join our session because it will be helpful for us to learn about burnout, whether it's it for future use, like for you to recognize whether like I'm experiencing burnout or not or you can learn to like support your loved ones around you like when they are experiencing burnout and so for today's talk we will actually dive in the depths of like understanding burnout which includes like you know the definition of burnout the signs and symptoms of burnout stages and also healthy ways to cope with burnout and without further ado, let's start by understanding what is burnout. So you see, like burnout isn't just about feeling tired or exhausted. It's actually more than that. It can be like a chronic and also persistent like emotional, physical and exhaustion that you feel like, you know, even the demands of life or work become like too much to handle like you so let's say like your en energy tank is like it's running on fumes and even the small small tasks it seems like just mountains that you can't even conquer it so it often results from this like prolonged exposure to like demanding work personal pressure or it can be like a combination of both also and manifest differently for different people but the common symptoms include like feeling constantly exhausted detachment cynicism and also a reduced sense of accomplishment but then i also heard like people around me that told me before like you know burnout may actually happen to like working adults only so what do you think you see Hmm, that's a common misconception because a lot of research and even the WHO defines it as mostly focusing on the occupation. So those who are being stressed because uh, due to occupational stress. But actually, occupation can be more than just work related. It could also be if let's say today you are a student and what you need to focus on is fulfilling the expectations of a student. You want to achieve better results. You want to perform well academically. That could also lead to burnout. If let's say you are a caregiver to your children or to your parents as well or elderly, that could also lead to burnout if you are having to fulfill that expectations and you keep on uh, pushing yourself. That could also lead to a lot of stress and burnout as well. Yeah. Mm. Burnout doesn't discriminate. Like it can happen to like anyone, anytime, at any point in life. Yes. Mm. It's like COVID-19, doesn't discriminate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah. don't worry. It's not like when if you are experiencing burnout, this is not like a life sentence. So it's not like you will be forever in this stage that like, oh I'm burnt out and whatnot. We can actually learn more about burnout itself and also to learn about ways that we can actually overcome this burnout 
so that we can live a more positive and healthier life too. I see one of our, uh, a few of our guest uh, audience are joining as well. So welcome everyone again. Uh, some of them are quite frequent join uh, audience lah. So really happy to see them. Mm -hmm. I see. So like with me being continuing like the session. So it's just like, like what we mentioned just now. It's not a life sentence. So maybe one thing that we can start to talk about is you know, to understand the signs and symptoms first. Because of course you want to know like whether what I'm going through or like experiencing right now is it burnt out or it can be something else? So let me start off with the first one. And when I'm talking about the symptom, I will actually like show uh, a picture of all the symptoms. I think everyone can see, right? And so yeah, just feel free to chip in if you have anything to say or like you want to type in the chat box, that's okay too. And for symptoms, it actually can read from, it actually has like different aspects. So it can be from like physical, emotional, or behavioral aspects. And I will be talking about the physical symptoms of burnout first. So for the first one, actually having like frequent headaches and recurring headaches are the first sign that you are experiencing burnout. And these headaches, right, it can actually range from like a mild to severe level. And with this headache, you can actually experience some tension in your neck or like shoulder as well. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays, we have to sit in front of the computer. Most of us, if let's say you are an office worker, actually it can just come off as very uh, frequent. Lah. When you sit there a long time, you didn't move around, the blood flow, so circulation is not so good. Uh, it comes with the stress. So physically you're not moving already tense up <laughs> frequent headaches our our audience also say it, like frequent headaches yes that's yeah. you mm -hmm. all of us feel that if we are constantly in the stress yeah and also not only headaches like other symptoms could also include like stomach problem so when we see stomach problem it includes something like um indigestion stomach aches or like an upset stomach. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of clients have these uh, gastric issues as well. Like they get anxious, they get stressed, and then their stomach will have gastrics. Mm. Yeah, like even from my friend, right? So for her, when she's close to having this burnout, she actually developed like this bowel syndrome, like IBS. Mm. Mm. Yes, hmm. irritable bowel syndrome is very closely linked to anxiety as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It affects her la, like in general because like, there are a lot mm. of people cannot take and whatnot just so that she can recover. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's quite difficult to experience that. Mm. Okay. I will talk about the next symptom. The next symptoms include like feeling constantly exhausted. So when we experience burnout, it's very likely that like we will feel very tired, like all the time, even after you get enough sleep. So like, I don't know, let's say your ideal amount of sleep is eight hours. So even after getting the eight hours of sleep, you will still wake up feeling very tired and you don't feel like getting yeah, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't apply to those people who like to sleep, yeah? This one. <laughs> if you like to sleep a lot, 10 hours is still normal for you, hmm. then it doesn't apply to you. So anyone who likes to sleep here, I like to sleep a lot. So you can let me know, if let us know <laughs> who likes to sleep. Yeah, but this is a bit more different. If let's say it's more like a change. Usually you sleep for 8 hours, that's enough. You feel energetic, you feel enough energy to go through the day. But now because of this burnt out, you feel so tired all the time. Sleep for 10 hours, 12 hours is still not enough. You feel like sleeping all day. Lah. Yeah, <laughs> then uh, it's actually a different, a different sign. So, but that, you know, there may be changes in the amount of 
everything and whatnot. That also relates to our another point. Uh, so sometimes when we have any changes in appetite or sleep patterns, that could symptom of so, it actually manifests a bit differently. So some people they will actually um, eat very very less. So could be one. Or on the other hand, they would eat like overeat, which may be to weight gain as well. So yeah, like this is one pattern, and that like the same one applies to sleep also. If there's some people have experienced like difficulty sleeping, like insomnia and whatnot, but for some people they actually oversleep. Some of the patterns, but just to be mindful that if all this while you are someone that um, like to sleep more, that shouldn't be a problem with you. But when you notice that there's a change in this pattern, this is the time when you can be a bit more mindful. Mm -hmm. And my experience, yeah, yeah. That's true. So if any one of us is experiencing all these symptoms, feel free to share in the chat box. Like it's very common of uh, that we all will experience some of these issues and symptoms and all feeling very tired, uh needing a lot of sleep or couldn't even sleep enough, uh or cannot fall asleep easily, sleeping yeah. lesser than usual. Mm. And also another physical symptom also include like frequent illnesses. So when we experience burnout, right, it's very easy for us to fall sick actually. Like common colds, flu, fever, or like coughing. Mm, yes, especially uh, it's actually related to biological reasons as well. So when we get stressed, actually we, we, our body will secrete a lot more cortisol. And this hormone can also relate to how uh, it relates to our immune system lowered down overall. So when we are stressed out, our immune system lowered down. So of course, it's easily to get uh, get sick easily. Mm. Yes, and also it reflects if let's say your company has a lot of employees uh, having sick leaves. It actually reflects something as well. It reflects maybe your workplace is a bit too stress stressful mm. for for the employees. So the HR needs to look out for that uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's a very important sign to look for when physically uh, it's easier to look out as well uh, physically having symptoms mm. so all for physical symptoms of burnout i will still do a recap first but when as i'm doing the recap like any part of your few let us know right like you can type in the chat box like what are symptoms that you actually experience so but in the physical the symptoms frequent headache and then stomach issues fatigue a frequent illness and also changes in appetite and sleep pattern so yeah that's all for physical symptoms mm. Okay, I think uh, everyone is uh, busy reflecting. <laughs> if let's say anyone found like, oh, I have a question. Is this a symptom of burnout or maybe it's not? Mm -hmm. Feel free to write down in the chat box as well. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll discuss it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing the sharing first. <laughs> yeah, the oh. not grateful for it. The HR will not look out that they know they will look out for new employees wow oh. so, so brutal truth huh? okay we'll leave that to the hr to decide what they want to do uh, oh okay so one of our audience say experience all symptoms mm, okay so you can continue with looking i uh, will discuss more of the symptoms and check out with all the symptoms whether you meet them and we'll discuss how you can deal with it as well lah. yeah mm. so moving so, on is the, yeah so moving on is the emotional symptoms of burnout 
um, one of the emotional symptoms include like feeling helpless and hopeless also. So maybe when we are experiencing burnout, right, a lot of the times we will feel like we cannot do anything else. Like everything doesn't seem to go our way at all. And you will also question yourself like, I have already done so much. Why do I still feel like everything is out of my control? Like, why can't things just go my way? Yeah, a lot of these thoughts will pop out and feeling lack of control in anything and everything that they see. So this is one of quite a symptom for burnout, feeling a helpless feeling, right? Don't have the ability to actually tackle the demand or expectation that's placed upon you. Mm, yeah. Sometimes it also reflects the thoughts. So when you say like, oh, why can't things go my way? Actually, it's linked to our thought process. Lah. Sometimes when we get too stuck with uh, focusing on what we cannot control, that's when we get stuck on feeling helpless, feeling lack of control. Hmm. And there's nothing actually we can do because we, when we focus on things that we cannot control, it's true that we cannot control. Yeah. But it's a perception that we need to kind of broaden it as well to notice what are the things are in our control and what are the things that we are already doing as well. Yeah. Mm. And also another emotional symptom can also include like increased criticism. So because like, like, like what you mentioned just now, like when we have these negative thoughts and whatnot, we generally see life in a negative outlook. So that also includes like how we see other people. So when we say increased cynicism, it's more of like um, you get to be a bit more angry or like irritated at what others are doing. So you would feel like why are they doing such things and whatnot. You may even say like harsher words to people around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like in general just filled with anger, is it? being angry towards other people mm. Mm. and also other than like feeling angry towards others you may also experience another symptom of what we call it having like some stop mm. so when we experience burnout it's likely that like this is the time we always question and second guess like our decision like whether what i'm doing right or not is there anything else that i can do can i actually mm. put myself further yeah mm. it can be the yes and I, yeah a very important uh, sign as well like self doubts uh it's like how whatever that we see if let's say we are in that burnout state whatever mm. that we see are colored in gray color like that Everything is like um, not enough, um, doubting myself, feeling low, uh, a lot of these uh, doubts. Mm. Yeah. And it can be quite confusing as well. Uh, if let's say we talk about this lens of seeing things as grayish feelings, right? Maybe it can feel like a bit like depression as well. Anyone have depression? Later we'll talk about it as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Really like it. Mm. Yeah. So before we move on to that, so actually that is exactly what we are going to talk about later also. Like what's the difference between like depression and burnout? But like continue with the symptoms, it also can include like you no know, decreased satisfaction. So this actually kind of relates to those symptoms that I mentioned earlier. Because when you think that like you know not doing good enough and I can't accomplish goals and whatnot of course like you will feel less satisfied with yourself like, you know like why like usually I can do this but why at this point in time I actually cannot complete those tasks anymore mm. yeah so again it's the that lens of only seeing things that is not enough and seeing self as not enough as well 
But sometimes, right, I think uh, this also reflects the cognitive part, the thinking part. So we will fall into this trap of only focusing on things that are not enough, things that people say not enough. So sometimes it can come in a very subtle way, like, yeah. oh, uh, just now uh, I, I pick a drink also, I take the drink also, it's spilled over. So this small, this issue, right, like maybe something smaller, uh, something happens in a day, day-to-day -day life, where we make mistakes, but we will emphasize it a lot and focus on it too much and, and think that, oh, I've been making mistakes all day long, but actually it's just a small part of it, which is very normal. We all make we all make mistakes, um, just like everyday life. Mm. In like decreased satisfaction, it's also likely that like we experience increased enjoyment or something that we used to like. So we actually lost interest in. Mm, I don't know. Like let's just say that like, you used to like reading a lot. So maybe this during this period, you actually don't find yourself like wanting to read at all, even though there is something that you used to love. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Okay, so anyone so far have any questions related to the emotional symptoms? Or maybe, Abby, uh, when you talk about this, you have any related feelings towards this symptom? I guess it could help everyone to relate to it more. I think it's kind of similar to the example that I just gave. So actually, not not to say read, but I used to dance last time. And I remember during my degree, yeah, when there were too many deadlines and we're not crammed together, and there's like increased responsibilities, like not only from school, maybe from the family and not, that it made me very stressful. To the point that like I guess I'm experiencing burnout because like I don't seem to want my time to dance anymore. You don't seem to want your time to dance. Yeah. Is it? I can't hear. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Okay. Mm, yes. For me, uh, my personal experience would be like a too high workload during studies as well. Like because we have a lot of studies and assignments to do, a lot of requirements. And I feel like even like the usual self care that I'm supposed to do, like go to exercise, go to eat a nice food and things like that. I also don't feel motivated to do that. It's like the only thing I want to do is rest and sleep. Ah, that's one of my physical signs of burnout out lah. Mm, that can be very unpleasant to experience. Hmm. We also know one of the emotional symptoms which is like the loss of motivation. Yes, loss of motivation. <laughs> but, mm. Yeah, yeah uh, you're asking me to say it. I can't hear. Oh, I, 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 you can continue? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So, so the loss of motivation, right? So it's uh, one of the most important and uh, very frequently observed signs of burnout. Uh, losing motivation last time maybe you were very motivated to do your work but then nowadays you are like i go to work i feel like so dreadful every minute feels like years oh that is like so dreadful to go through the day and by the time you end your work it's like the happiest time and that's a sign for you to really mm. notice hey, uh, maybe i've been experiencing some kind of burnout uh, emotionally I have not been feeling very motivated and that could kind of if let's say at work you are burnt out already and then it might spread over to other areas like uh, you might not be motivated to go to your families you might not be motivated to hang out as well uh, all this can be influenced lah. Mm. very true and also like it can also affect us like how we feel about the world so like when we are experiencing burnout it's very likely that we feel very detached and we feel lonely in the world even when we have people that we love around us like yes you still feel very lonely like you are the only one in the world that no one really understands like what you are going through mm. Mm. And I think sometimes, right, we can look from a different perspective 
like instead of the person who is experiencing the burnout, people around them can also feel a bit off. Like yeah. you can notice, hey, my friend is not feeling as motivated, not as energetic as he or she used to be. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it can be confusing if you don't understand what burnout looks like and you'll be like, hey, what happened to my friend? Huh? Why suddenly so no motivation, don't want to hang out, don't want to reply to messages, what's wrong? Uh, so that could also, if you are a friend, you can notice that. Mm. For the word, they actually lead to misunderstandings or like confusion because they think that, that like, I don't know, like maybe the person has some dissatisfaction with them and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Those are all emotional symptoms. So just to sum up as well, um, we have like feeling helplessness, hopelessness, and increased cynicism, sense of like, failure or self doubt, decreased satisfaction and loss of interest. Also, like feeling detached or alone in the world, and also loss of motivation. Mm, mm, mm. I think the the pictures can be a bit less bright. You can increase the brightness a bit. I, I can see sometimes, cannot see sometimes. Yeah. Mm. And then we have uh, one of our audience, Thomas. Uh, the question is less of motivated. Can it be due to aging and not burn up? Or is it confirmed because of burn out? Mm, very good question. Trying to dissect. Is it because of aging uh, or is it really because of burnout? out, burn out? Mm. So uh, I will try, Abby, would you want to respond to this question first? Is it due to aging or is it due to burn out? Mm. Like at the end of the day, it's more of you deciding whether like, is it because that, you know, due to old age and whatnot, I don't know, like aging, that you realize there isn't too much things that you feel interested in anymore. That is very possible. But then again, I also see like a lot of people, even when they age, they actually explore like new interests or new passion for them. Yeah. Mm. Oh, sorry? You go on first. Yeah. So for burnout wise, I would say it's more likely this loss of motivation can be contributed like to burnout itself because like mm, it can be something that you used to like, you know, but it was just all all of a sudden that you start to lose this motivation or like passion for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh you, just now you mentioned is it could be it could be due to aging, right? Because I yeah and uh, some of the way is to kind of approach or engage with more activities is that right mm, yeah. mm. Uh, mm. okay uh other than that right if let's say you only look at less of motivation or lesser motivation i think if you took it out from the context it can happen to anyone so it can have many reasons to why today we are less motivated at what we are doing. sometimes it's just we have a change of hobbies we got bored of it ah we it can be that way mm. or it could also be some people uh they want they feel like uh, there are some hindrance, there are some barriers to doing this thing. So I feel less motivated to do this thing. But if let's say it's like you come with other burnout symptoms, you have other issues like, oh, feeling hopeless, seeing yourself lesser, self-doubts, uh, physical symptoms as well. Then if you come together and seeing it as a syndrome, like you have more than just less motivation, then you can consider, oh, I'm experiencing a whole range of burnout symptoms mm. so, so how that, that it can help you to see lah uh, not just taking it if one symptom maybe it's a lot more factors contributing to this mm. feel free to share with us, like, your opinions or anything that you would like to ask us while i continue to the next session so the next session is the behavioral signs of burnout 
actually for all these symptoms, right, it can be like interrelated with each other. So one of the various signs could be like decreased performance on like everyday tasks. So this is a time where you notice yourself like mm, I'm making more mistakes and I'm being less productive and I also have like some difficulty to concentrate or focus on my task at hand which yeah it would definitely the performance that affect the performance mm -hmm. mm, yes but to take note this is doesn't mean that you have ADHD because you have uh, poor attention, uh, procrastination issues, uh, doesn't mean it's ADHD lah, okay? Mm. So, so, we mentioned that like we may feel very detached from other people, so which could also lead us to actually doing it, so we may intentionally like withdraw or isolate ourselves from the people that we care about or we love. But, of course, to take note that this is different from wanting to spend some time for yourself to recharge or to relax. Mm -hmm. So, Yongsen, do you have anything to add on to this? I can't hear you if you're... Yuxin, I can't hear you. Mm. Um, okay, so I guess Yuxin is having some technical issues again, but don't worry, I will be continuing first. And so just now you see also kind of like briefly mentioned like it's likely that we will also procrastinate when we are experiencing burnout because like you know we don't have the motivation to do things and whatnot we will be thinking like later lah i will do it later which actually this procrastination topic was shared by yongsin and also ira the other day so i will just briefly go through but yes when we experience burnout, we may also have this delay in our task that we couldn't complete like what we need to do on time. And then also another likely like behavioral signs of burnout includes like emotional outbursts. So this is a time that you find yourself getting like easily triggered, like anger, irritation. Uh, irritability or like frustration at other people like other people it can be anything but it's just that you feel like you are more easily triggered like by anything even if it's like small or minor and you might you may find yourself like snapping at others more easily so i just want to ask like everyone here oh yeah i already saw one comment yeah you say that's you Mm. So yeah, this is a sign that like maybe we are actually experiencing but it's not that we are having anger issue. How do I differentiate if all the symptoms I experience is due to burnout or other issues? That's a very good question. So when we say that like that's why there's a lot of overlapping actually between like burnout and other disorder and whatnot. It's just that when we are experienced, a lot of the times burnout is like an early indication to other issues that you may have. Oh, PTSD. Yuxin. Hello, are you back? Oh, never mind, she's not back yet. So I will be continuing. So it's just that a lot of the times burnout is like an early indication and we can actually try to find ways to actually combat it head on, which we will be discussing it later. And for another audience that 
that say he or she has like PTSD or easily get triggered. So maybe you can try to like, you know, more on assessing on yourself, like whether you get triggered, like you get triggered all along or is it because of a trigger event or like a significant event in the past that actually made you get easily triggered and angry at other people. So that is something to differentiate. And last but not least, the behavioral science could include like using substance to cope. And when we say substance, it could include like us, like whether it's drinking alcohol, using drugs, and even excessive caffeine. That can be one that you try to cope with the stress and also burden of burnout. Yes. So it's better that you try to find some healthier coping mechanism to cope with this burnout instead of using substances. So, before we proceed, let's just give like Yungsin a few minutes to see if she get to join us. Okay, so I will just recap again of the behavioral science. It actually includes like reduced performance in like everyday tasks. The second one would be withdrawal or isolation. The third is procrastination. And also the fourth is like emotional outbursts. And the last one is to using substance to cope. So these are all the behavioral signs. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm back. Yeah. I think yeah. there's some really bad technical issues. I suddenly couldn't hear your voice. Yeah, thank you for having me back. No so like finish explaining the behavioral signs and I'm sure that most of y'all have already realized like you know there are a lot of overlapping of burnout with other mental health disorders like depression and maybe so Yongsin would you like to share with everyone like what's the difference between them yeah that, that's true because just now we mentioned burnout and depression is quite similar so the difference actually is based on the severity level. So depression is more severe. It affects your daily functioning. It affects your workplace performance, even to a, a, worse, a severe extent, lah, whereby you may not be able to perform at work. You won't even want to go out to work. Um, you can't even face people. It can be severe to that extent. But burnout is more to like the milder kind of issues whereby you can still function you can still pull yourself out and work and probably people around you won't be able to notice much differences but a little bit of like oh you look less energetic you look less motivated and things like that lah. um i think we only have about 20 minutes left so maybe we'll go quicker a bit so that we have more time to talk about the the ways to deal with burnout as well yes uh, I will move on to the stages of burnout uh, quickly. Uh, let's take a look at these five stages. Lah. Okay, so there are five stages of burnout. The first one is honeymoon phase. That means everything is rosy, everything is great. It's that like you get the honeymoon in the when you just started your relationship. It's similar to that whereby you have a lot of motivation to work on your goals and targets in your work. And after that, because we have set goals, but sometimes there are things that may not go so smoothly. We might encounter some kind of stress. So there goes the second phase that is the onset of stress, right? So we start to feel like, hey, what things are not so good? Uh, uh, what can I do? Uh? Uh, so all this can be uh, starting. Hmm. And if we just leave it that way, and then we move on to the chronic stress, that means we will be thinking more about our work or our tasks. For example, if you are a mom, then you keep on thinking about how can I help my kids huh? or how can I take care of my parents. Uh, we will be taking too much time only focus on the things that makes us feel stressed out. Mm. And then every day it repeats, it becomes chronic stress. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So if any one of you notice that, hey, I'm in the onset, I'm in a chronic stress, then we can, uh, you can type it down here. Mm -hmm. All right. And then after chronic stress, we'll move on to burnout. Mm -hmm. That is the actual burnout that Abby has just said. Yeah. So I hope you still remember what are the symptoms for burnout because later we'll test you out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And the last one is habitual mm -hmm. burnout. That means after some time, because you are in that burnout and then you didn't do anything about it, then you will become like habitually, you just burn out and every day you don't feel motivated, you feel so dreadful, um, full of despair, full of apathy, like don't care. And sometimes you might have depression and anxiety as well. So it comes in stages lah. How we started off with motivation and ended up if we don't care, take care of ourselves, we go into that state mm. of burnout. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So Abby, you have anything to add to these stages? Uh, like that stages. Are you saying that like all of us will actually go through each stages? Like we will progress accordingly, or how does that go? That, that's a good question. Actually, all of us doesn't mean that we will have to go through one by one. But sometimes you might skip one, maybe we start to feel burnt out already all this while. So we just won't notice the honeymoon phase at all. Or sometimes we started off as honey phase, honeymoon phase. And then afterwards, by the time we notice, we are already in the burnt out stage. We are already like skip to the burnt out because everything comes so fast, so quickly that we don't notice maybe or it just happens that way that we are falling into this state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very important for us to take note, take note of what's going on, mm -hmm. which stage you are in, mm -hmm. and then only we can do something to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Mm. So, yes. Like what you can say, like there is things that we can do to take care of ourselves which I will be continuing. So like now we would like to talk about what are some of the ways that we can actually try to do just so mm. that we can. Mm. Abby, before we move on, I saw this question on how to deal with the feeling of worrying, turning people down. Is it answered just now? I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I think I overlooked this question. Mm. Yeah, so how to deal with the feelings of worrying, worry that you turn people down, is it? I think it comes back to what stops you from turning people down. I, a lot of times, people uh, prevent or struggles with saying no, uh, struggles to refuse something is because they feel like, oh, I might offend the other person. Oh, uh, this is rude to do. So say, thinking that turning people down is a rude thing, uh, it's a perception lah. So if we focus on this way of seeing things, we will not be able to set boundaries for ourselves when in fact, we all deserve to set boundaries for ourselves and take note of what we need because only we ourselves know what we deserve and also what we want. That's when when we tell other people, hey, uh, I actually don't think this is appropriate. Actually, this workload is a bit too much for me. How about this, this, this? Maybe we can adjust it. So this way of um, setting boundaries or suggesting a new way of dealing with things instead of overwhelming ourselves is a self-care as well. It's important for ourselves and we deserve to, to have this as well. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything else? And maybe I miss out? I don't think so. I think that's all. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's quickly move on to the next one. So, I'll be talking about healthy ways to cope. And so basically, we can try to deal with like burnout in this oh, 3R approach. So, when we say 3R, the first R is recognize. The second R is reverse. And the last one is resilience. So I'll be starting off with the first one first. Oh wait, okay. Um, I saw a question, but then it, it disappeared. Oh, 
I think this question I actually answered just now. So I'll be continuing first with the first step, like first arm to recognize. So when we say recognize, we have to be more like mindful and pay attention to what we are experiencing to watch out for those warning signs and symptoms of burnout, which was like discussed earlier. So right now, I would actually want to give like a short scenario and I'm hoping that y'all would actually manage to identify the symptoms and signs later on. So the scenario is, so for Jackie, Jackie is a working adult that he works a normal nine to six job that, um, yeah, it's just a normal job. But recently, there has been like an increased workloads and increased responsibility from the family that him and the have to like OT for a very long period of time. Let's say four months, for around four months. And last time, he used to enjoy his time after work to play video games with his friends as a form of like relaxation and to rest. But right now, every time after he go back to work, like from work, he just want to sleep. He doesn't feel like doing anything at all. And even with this sufficient amount of sleep, he still feel constantly tired like after he wake up and has these persistent headaches that affects his um, ability to concentrate. So that also affects like his productivity and performance at work. So based on that scenario, I would like like anyone in the chat, like you can type in the chat box, like what are some of the signs and symptoms you notice in Jackie? Mm. So what are the signs and symptoms that you notice in Jackie, right? Mm. Mm. So is, it, is this based on a real life example? Mm, actually, no, I just came up. Yeah. But I feel like it can be like someone may be experiencing the same thing. <laughs> it could be because it's, so, it's a very common scenario, especially do work, right? OT, external requirements, and couldn't continue with the usual coping, that is the gaming. Mm. Mm. So everyone, if you have any, if you notice any symptoms, feel free to put it down into the chat box. While if you're busy eating or busy with other things for listening, then we will move on as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let me try and answer as well because you said it very quickly. Oh. Jackie, right? Mm. So this Jackie, he couldn't do his coping, right? The gaming part. Yeah. And also what you mentioned, I think you mentioned about headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling so tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And procrastination issues. Uh, couldn't, couldn't concentrate, is it? Mm -hmm. Couldn't concentrate. Mm. And, and that's all that I can catch. Did I miss? Yeah, I feel like basically that's all as well. Like... Mm -hmm. I will just do a very quick recap. It's like, you know, yes. having headaches and feeling constantly exhausted despite getting enough hours of sleep. And uh, so, like also decrease productivity and decrease mm. performance and also a oh, loss of interest like in his video game. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it can be very common that we all experience these kind of symptoms and can be quite uh, difficult la, to experience as well. Mm. Okay. Like recognize is the very first step that we can do to overcome this burnout. For the next step, Yungsi, would you like to take over? Yes, so the next one is reverse, right? We have talked about the three R. First one, recognize. Second, reverse. So now that you notice the symptoms of burnout, you know that, hey, I actually experienced all these issues mm -hmm. and I really feel like overwhelmed. So the first thing is kind of reduce that overwhelm first. You might want to talk to a therapist or you can talk to someone who are close enough to you that you can trust as well, that you can re relieve yourself from this tension, this feeling overwhelmed. And once you feel much better emotionally, more stabilized, then you can look at what are the things that you can reduce. For example, if you are overwhelmed with too much of workload 
what you can do is reducing the workload. Maybe that's one of the options. Mm -hmm. Discuss with your boss, find out ways to deal with it. Or sometimes if that say it's not possible to reduce it, you might want to look at time management skills, assertiveness skills, like setting boundaries mm -hmm. and things like that, right? Mm. So maybe you want to add more on the time management, Abby. Yeah, yeah. I should add. So other than like managing your time, you can also try to like prioritize your tasks. So you what is that you need to do first and some you can save it for later. So there is one matrix that we find it very useful. It's called the urgent important matrix. So everyone can just search it online like after this. But yes, so for this matrix, so there are like a four quadrants. You can try to write it down. What are the tasks that are most important and most urgent at this point? So you try to complete those tasks first. And after that, you proceed with tasks that are like important, but maybe not that urgent at this point. So this is one. And for third, for the third one is you can try to do tasks that are like not that important, but it's very urgent. So since you know that it's very urgent, you can actually try to seek help from others as well. Like whether you can delegate this task to like other people so they can try to help reduce the workloads like place on you. Mm -hmm. And for the last quadrant, which is like tasks that are not important and not urgent at this point, but of course, that is something that you would like to complete as well. So those, we try to save it for later, like after we are done with the uh, first three quadrants. Mm, yes. And one thing that people, I think this is quite commonly, people will know, aga aga, we have these four quadrants and try to distribute your tasks so that you focus on the most important and most urgent things. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people struggle to differentiate it. Sometimes it's due to the emotionally, like you feel like everything is important, everything is urgent. You already feel so crowded, uh, clouded in your mind. Lah. You feel overwhelmed, you feel anxious already. So it's harder to make judgments on that way. So one of the way is really just write it down and reduce that tension in your mind kind of put it down one by one so that we know clearly on our hand what do we have mm -hmm. and another reason another thing is i noticed that is that when they have difficulties in asserting boundaries is mm -hmm. when people especially the urgent and not important tasks people will keep on asking you to do this do that and we struggle to set the boundary and tell them that hey uh, I'm actually focusing on this right now and it's really important mm -hmm. and I don't really have time to focus on this urgent but not important task yet. So uh, setting that boundary as well is one of the barriers for us to really focus on what matters. So maybe these two parts also can let everyone to know that first is uh, when we feel overwhelmed, it's harder to make judgment. And second one is when we couldn't assert our boundaries, we also find it difficult to focus on things that matters mm -hmm. so we have to we can look at that as well mm. yes and i think uh that's all for the reverse part and the last one is to build resilience right mm. and that's the most fun part that i always like to talk about which is to build that kind of self-care resilience and i think we have talked about that before right? our other practitioners uh, Shari, I and Nani actually talk about this topic like three weeks ago, like mm -hmm. on how yes, yes, but unfortunately it's not recorded. So uh, sometimes uh, issues on Instagram lah. So so everyone must join live. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. We will still try to, like give in like some pointers under resilience itself. So like what you mentioned. In order for us to build resilience, we need to take care of like our physical and emotional health first. So, Yusin, do you have any self-care activities that you usually carry out? No, I don't do self-care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. No lah. Okay, so we must do self-care because we need that care essentially as well so the usual self-care that i do the one that i like to do is yoga uh, aside from taking good food good sleep 
yoga is one of the extra things that I will make sure I do because I sit down a lot in the day. Most of the time I will be sitting down and I feel so much tension in my back. So yoga is a way to release that tension and also feel more relaxed and peaceful and I like the mindfulness elements in yoga practice as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that could be one of the ways uh, and it's free as well to do exercise at home. Mm. Mm. How about you, Abby? For me, I actually like to play games. Like I play video games. So that is one way for me to like take, like, to take care of myself. Like I would like to play games to relax. And on top of that, I like to play with like my partner and my friends. So this is also the time that like we try to build connection and to strengthen our bond together as well. Mm, yes. And I like how you are pointing out that uh, we have different areas of needs. Mm. For example, playing games is mostly like a pleasure. But at the same time, you also fulfill another need of to socialize. Yeah. So another form of need, like we have different needs, right? So socialize is also part of our needs to take care of. And other than that, uh, food, sleep, all these are biological basic needs that we need to take care of to make sure that uh, physically we are balanced yeah. and so that emotionally we can be balanced as well. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Yes. I also remember one point. I think maybe you can expand on it more. It's just that I remember are you saying that like your friends sometimes she go like massage right oh yes so uh i have a friend that i know of uh so i'm not sure if she's still here so in the chat room as well so she actually said oh some people don't like to exercise so she's one of the kind that uh, she doesn't like to exercise but what she did is very creative that is she chose someone to exercise for her that is choosing massage therapies and things like that so i think we don't really have to force ourselves to do all the things that prescribe but we can be more creative and find ways that fit our our hobbies our preferences but also address the need as well mm -hmm. mm. Uh, at the end of the day it's more of like us deciding like what's the best for us because like some people they may prefer like writing a journal or like to meditate but for some people, they may prefer something else, like whether is it to paint, to dance, or to do exercise. Yeah, exercise. Yeah, something more active. So it's okay as long as it makes you feel more relaxed. It makes you feel like recharged. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Lah. And everyone, if let's say you're still here, you can feel free to share your self-care activities, whether it's watching K-drama, it's journaling, or just simply laying down there and sleep for one hour for just a recharge, lah. not to oversleep, but recharge. Some people spiritually, they like to practice prayers, meditation, uh, that also help them to feel more calm. Mm -hmm. Feel free to type into the chat box and let us know what your thoughts are what your self-care activities are. And we are also about to close as well. Time is about up. It's 1 p.m. Yeah, so I really appreciate everyone here who asked a lot of questions and also engage with us. Uh, it's really a pleasant experience to share with all of you. And it also helps us to reflect on ourselves, whether we are experiencing any burnout symptoms, whether we need more self-care, and really uh, to take care of our own needs so that we are more prepared to take care of others as well. Mm. All right. So if everyone is ready to go back to your usual routine daily life, uh, take care of yourself. Have mm -hmm. a good week and hope to see you all next week on Wednesday, 12 p.m. as well. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Anything else closing? Yes, one, one thing. So for next week, it's not next Wednesday, but next Thursday, because next Wednesday is a public holiday. Oh, right. That's true. Uh, yeah, I see I'm too focused on working already. I, I, maybe I need to take care of myself also. <laughs> so everyone next Thursday, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey.